a generator basically takes mechanical energy and converts it into electrical energy. A generator. In some format, it could be you spinning something. It could be uh, water going down and uh, spinning some sort of turbine. There are all sorts of different ways to do it. A generator basically takes mechanical energy and converts it into electrical energy. A motor takes some sort of energy. It could be uh, electrical energy in terms of an electric motor. It could be uh, some sort of chemical energy in terms of some sort of uh, gas motor or something like that. It converts that into mechanical energy. It just kind of depends on which type of motor. But notice that they are basically inverses of one another. One takes and mechanical energy and converts it to electrical energy, and the other goes the other direction. So basically, when we talk about generators, we're also, a lot of the terminology we're going to use are going to be the same for the generators and the motors. So we're going to start with the basic idea of a generator. A generator. Basically, what you have in a generator is you have a loop in a magnetic field. Here is the area vector of the loop which means the theta initial is equal to zero. We then take that loop and we turn it through some mechanical means in our magnetic field. So this will be position one, then we turn it to position two, position three, and position four. And what this does is this changes the magnetic flux through this loop as a function of time and therefore creates an uh, EMF or an induced current in our loop. So what we're doing is we're taking and turning this loop via some sort of mechanical means and therefore creating an electric current. The whole idea, generator, converting mechanical energy into electrical. Notice this is going to give us our maximum flux, right? This would be our minimum flux, and these would both be zero flux. But what we need to do is we need to figure out the EMF. That is our goal. So the magnetic flux equals B A cosine theta. Angular velocity. Generally what we're doing in here is we're turning this at some sort of constant angular velocity. So the angular velocity equals change in theta over change in time. It is customary to set theta initial to be, to be zero and time initial to be equal to zero. Therefore, the change in theta is going to be theta final minus theta initial, which just equals theta final minus zero, or they just call it theta. And therefore, uh, theta is equal to uh, this ends up being equal to theta over t. Same is true for time, to let time t initially equal to zero. And therefore, the theta is equal to angular velocity times time. Therefore, the magnetic flux equals b a times a cosine of omega times t. And you can see where angular frequency comes from. So now, what we're really interested in is the in the EMF, the electric potential difference. Well, that's equal to the negative times, or the EMF equals negative N times the derivative of the magnetic flux as a function of time. Or the negative of N times the derivative of B A cosine of, now it's omega T. Okay. Generally, the magnetic field and the area are constants, therefore, Therefore, we can bring them both out from underneath the integral. We get our, the derivative. We get the EMF is equal to negative N times uh, B times A times the derivative as a function of time of the cosine of omega T. Derivative of cosine omega T with respect to time, Nick? Negative sine negative omega sine omega. So we have to take the, in the derivative of omega t as well. So we get the EMF is equal to negative nBA 
times the negative of the sine of omega t, but then you also have the omega. In other words, the EMF is equal to, we have two negatives, so we have WNBA <laughs> times the sine of omega t. <laughs> Which means this is the, the EMF as a function of time of a generator. And the maximum EMF would be equal to just the WNBA. Yeah, it helps. Okay. Uh, so that is our derivation of the EMF of a generator. Now, the way it looks, make sure you understand, is uh, we have two different types of generator. One would be one for an alternating current generator, and one would be a direct current generator. This is a figure from your text uh, on page 983, if you're interested. Generally, what you have is you have your magnetic field created by your magnets, and you have your loop. And again, some sort of external thing is rotating this loop, and then you have these slip rings, which are going to cause a current to be able to pass through these various rings. Now, if you'll notice, what happens is the direction of the current is actually changing the whole time. So this is an alternating current generator, and it will create current that actually looks like this, where you have the current changes as a function of time, or the EMF, because the EMF and the current are related. So the EMF will change as a function of time. Uh, this would be position one, position two, position three, and position four, when related to how we had it set up before. And this would be the location of the EMF map. That's your alternating current. Now, you can also create direct current what you have to do in order to create direct current is to use something called a split ring commutator, which is this. What it does is it keeps the direction of the current the same the whole time. Emily, do you have a question? No. Okay. Yes. Um, if that's the EMF at position one. I thought position one was it, it was at its max. That's where the that's where the flux it is at its oh, max, okay. right? But remember. The, the EMF is the derivative of the flux. Okay. So again, this is the this would be essentially the cosine wave, right? The flux is the cosine wave, but we figured out the derivative of it, which is going to be the sine wave. Okay. Which is probably where Emily's incredible slip is coming from. Right? But remember, this is sine, whereas this was the cosine. Alright. So that, so in order to cause uh, a direct current, you need a split ring commutator. And what it does is it creates the current the same, in the same direction the whole time. But again, you're not actually going to get a constant EMF that way. So what you actually need to do is have a bunch of different generators all slightly off phase from one another, so that when you add them all up, you get something that looks like this. We get EMF from one of them, looks like this. And then we offset one, we get one that looks like this. We offset another one, looks like this, and then one more. And you can see, if you offset a bunch of them, they'll all add together and you get kind of a direct current. When they all add together, you get one constant EMF and hence one constant current. <laughs>